uh, Mr. Mayor and, and commissioners and to the uh, public that are uh, joining us and, and those watching and to the staff that's in the room. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, tonight as we go into our uh, completion of our budget uh, preparation cycle. So tonight is the first of two required public budget hearings. The budget process, as the commission will recall, began with the city's new, and I would say hopefully improved, strategic planning process that was back in February. And as committed by city management, the city commission strategic plan provided the guidance for the development of this proposed fiscal year 2022 budget. In addition to the two day strategic planning retreat, the city commission also worked with staff during a budget planning retreat and two budget workshops. All of this preparation bringing us to this public hearing tonight. For tonight's initial budget presentation, I will present first the proposed base budget assumptions that the commission has seen and heard before. I will then present budget funding allocations for each of the city commission's strategic planning target areas and initiatives. I will then discuss the operational additions to the budget, followed by a discussion of funding for the additional city commission initiatives that resulted from the budget workshops. I will then present some historical information regarding staffing levels and millage rates. And then our finance director, Mike Brossart, will give a total budget overview and will present millage rate options and the resulting day's cash estimates. As previously presented to the City Commission, the proposed budget includes the following assumptions. Budget proper, budgeted property value growth in fiscal year 22, which is the budget we're working on, is set at 11.03% based on the information provided by the Polk County Property Appraiser's Office. We have then estimated property value growth in fiscal year 23 at 6%, and we've estimated property value growth in fiscal year 24 at 5%. As the Commission is aware, general fund revenues and surplus reserves will be maintained at a minimum of 45 to 60 days cash on hand, by fiscal year 2024, as is the policy of the commission. Based on the city commission's last directive to staff, we have maintained the existing millage rate of 5.4644 mills. Again, that is the existing millage rate, though we know this is up for discussion tonight. Also, as presented back during the workshops, a maximum increase of 1.5% and controllable expenditures was managed by all of our departments and many thanks to our department directors as the commission saw during the workshops after asking them to hold those controllable expenses at one and a half percent i went back and asked them if they could find additional cuts and and they did and we've covered that in the workshops also included in the budget assumptions are the salary adjustments for city staff. The across the board salary adjustments that have been placed into this proposed budget include the general employees for an across the board of one and a half percent. The collective bargaining unit employees would be based upon their collective bargaining agreements. Merit increases for eligible employees for the general employees have been placed in the budget and proposed at two and a half percent. And for collective bargaining employees, again, it is based upon their individual collective bargaining agreements. Also, there is a 1% increase in health insurance rates in calendar year 2022 that is included in the budget. As discussed in my opening comments, the city commission's strategic planning target area areas and initiatives have funding allocations in this proposed budget. And I think that's an important place to draw attention to because many times through this process, the commission has talked about um, the, the initiatives that you all ranked. 
and what we were able to fund of those initiatives, or at least what is proposed for now. But it's important to keep in mind that there's also funding allocated based on your strategic planning document, which includes the target areas and the initiatives. And I'm going to cover those now. For target area one, which is infrastructure, included in the fiscal year 2022 budget is $1,707,506. The funding sources for that money comes from the Community Redevelopment Agency and the Transportation Fund. It will fund projects like the expansion of ICASP, which is our Intersection Collision Avoidance Safety Program. It also includes Providence Road Design and many other things related to infrastructure. For target area two, which is the economic development target area, we have multiple categories. Category one is uh, related specifically to economic development. The fiscal year 2022 budget includes funding of $1,748,950. The funding sources for that money comes from the American Rescue Plan Act funds, the CRA, electric, water, wastewater, and the general fund. Some of the projects that will be funded from that allocation include our manufacturing and research incentive program, a master plan renderings for downtown West, which includes West Lake Wire and Lake, Bu and Lake Beulah, uh, the connectivity um, analysis that was discussed when we talked about the ARPA funding allocations and also some small business support coming from the ARPA funding as well. Remaining in target area two, but now moving on to category two, which is based upon the innovation district. At this time in the fiscal year 2022 budget, there are no funding allocations. However, based upon the economic impact analysis, that was published by the Central Florida Development Council in May of 2020. That particular report calls for the need of supportive local governments. We have the infrastructure grants that I talked about just a moment ago that could potentially be used in the Innovation District when a project is determined. Much of that is based on timing. I don't have one of those sheets. Could I get one that's got all this? Can you go over there? It's in the boat. In the very back. Thank you. <laughs> Never look in the back. <laughs> all right. Sorry, Commissioner Reed. It's quite all right. Again, uh, much of the, uh, the work to be done in the Innovation District is based upon timing and opportunity. Still in target area two, but moving on to category three which is still linked to economic development, but based upon um, an educational uh, strategic initiative. Um, fiscal year 2022 budget includes $988,750. The funding sources come from the Lakeland Lender uh, International Airport and from the ARPA, again, which is the American Rescue Plan Act funding. Some of the projects that will be funded uh, with that includes the Flying Classroom, as it's being called, initiative that uh, the city is a 50-50 partner with Polk County Schools, which will bring academies to Winston Academy of Engineering and also Inwood Elementary. There's also the 500,000 uh, in ARPA funding to be used to support the Chamber's request. There's also funding for neighborhood programming and the cultural arts recovery grant funding that was covered when we discussed the ARPA funding. Moving on to target area three, which is related to the uh, affordable uh, housing strategic initiatives in the 20, 2022 uh, budget, it includes $3,325,000. That funding uh, is coming from uh, the Community Development uh, Block Grant Program from the ARPA funds, from the CRA, and from the general fund. And that funding uh, will assist the construction of multifamily rental units. Uh, it will also uh, allow for financing uh, for qualified builders of those units and others, and also a loan program to private develop developers. Again, all in the target area for affordable housing. Target area four, City Hall Communications. 
the 2022 uh, budget, uh, proposed budget presently has $161,053 allocated. These will be for a communication a audit of our communications department. Uh, it will also broaden our internship program and the commission's aware of those past discussions. We were going to create a program that isn't just based on a summer, summer internship opportunity, but uh, will be more of a year round internship opportunity. It also uh, assists us in con continuing with our leadership training uh, programming that the city has for our employees. We have training programs called 48 hours and new to supervision uh, that will continue. We have LinkedIn Learning, which is an online learning platform that our employees uh, use for uh, training purposes. We have our onboarding program where uh, each month all of the new uh, city employees that have been hired uh, go through a process and spend the first hour of their first day uh, with uh, city management uh, to be onboarded into uh, the culture of our organization. And hopefully once uh, the pandemic has somewhat subsided, we will be able to return to our uh, VIP and service awards to recognize our employees who serve this community. And certainly during this time of COVID under uh, much duress and concern. Target area five, which is related to uh, parks and recreation. The 2022 budget uh, includes $161,500. The funding sources come from lakes and stormwater, electric, water, and the general fund. Uh, this funding will uh, assist with uh, infrastructure upgrades at Bonnet Springs Park. That would include the lighting for the entrance of the roadway. Um, also will include water education and conservation programming at the Florida Children's uh, Museum at Bonnet Springs Park, and will help to design uh, the Chase Street uh, trail as well. What is not included here, but it is probably important to note, is that as the commission and the public is aware, we did receive, our Bonnet Springs Park received nearly $43 million uh, in funding uh, from the, the HUD uh, program uh, grant, uh, but it will be received over a 10 year period. So it's not necessarily part of this year's uh, budget, um, but over time it certainly will be. And again, that's the $43 million grant that you're all aware of. Target area six, resiliency uh, planning. Um, the budget impact for fiscal year 22 includes $64,750. And that will assist us with acquiring the web EOC uh, programming that is needed uh, for our emergency uh, management processes. Target area seven, public safety. This includes $45,582 in the fiscal year 22 budget. And this will aid with uh, the general re recruitment costs that we have in public safety, including things like pre-employment polygraphs, psychological exams, cadet sponsorships, advertising for positions, and other things. That completes my presentation related to the strategic planning target area initiatives uh, that were developed by the city commission during that two day strategic planning process. What I will cover now are the operational additions to the budget that the commission saw when we had our last budget workshops. Um, based on these operational additions, there is uh, $130,000 that was initially programmed for the resurvey of the historic district phase one, however, as you will recall, we have been able to fund that out of the fiscal year 21 public improvement fund contingency fund. So that will now not need to be funded out of the 22 budget. Also, uh, the operational additions include three firefighter positions, which will maintain the minimum staffing on tower 15. Uh, partial year cost on that is 104,000. And again, that is uh, with the intent to make sure we meet the minimum manning requirements for fire safety. There's also the addition of a fire plans examiner that includes uh, the vehicle and equipment in addition to the position. That's a cost of $159,000 for all of those items. However, as discussed at our last workshop, there will be an offset of about estimated $90,000 per year in inspection revenues that will be generated as a result. 
And then finally, a recreation supervisor, recreation leader, and part-time recreation leader for the new Lake Crego. Uh, that cost is $126,000 in the budget. However, there is also an offsetting revenue of estimated at $55,000 a year in facility rental revenues that will be generated. Next is the item that I alluded to earlier. This was based upon uh, the commission's work uh, through the, the workshop where you ranked um, some other initiatives that the commission was interested in. And so presently included in the proposed budget includes $1.1 million for in-car video, taser, and body-worn camera systems package, plus two personnel and the required cloud and hardware storage. Another initiative brought forward by the commission was $75,000 for the expanded internship program that I've discussed previously, and also an additional $25,000 and cultural arts funding, which will increase our current funding from 250,000 to 275,000. I'll also note that the commission through that process reduced the high skill, high wage incentive by $75,000. Now I'm gonna give you just some historical uh, uh, perspective, uh, first related to staffing levels. Um, as you see on the overhead, if we do a five-year look back, you can see uh, what has happened to our staffing levels over that five-year period. Most notably, um, from last year's fiscal year to this proposed fiscal year 2022 uh, budget, we see our staffing level for full-time employees reduced by one position. And for our part-time employees, we are reduced by seven positions. The next slide as part of the presentation is related to, again, a historical perspective on the city's uh, past uh, millage rates over a 10-year period look back. Uh, millage increases have been primarily directly related to public safety initiatives. In fiscal year 2016, there was an increase of 0.90 mills that was established to maintain the policy for a 45 to 60 days cash on hand methodology. Uh, requirement that established by the, the City Commission at that time, as well as the impacts of long-term growth on City services. That being said, also in fiscal year 2019, the Commission did lower the millage rate by a tenth of a mil. As was identified in the budget parameters and assumptions, the recommendation for the upcoming fiscal year based on the last directive from the City Commission was to maintain the current millage rate for now at 5.4644 mills, which as you know, will require a supermajority vote from the commission. At this time, I'm going to ask our finance director, Mike Brosart, to uh, cover the overall total budget um, revenues and highlights. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. The, the next four slides uh, are ones we, we typically provide to the commission uh, the first two will be the revenues and then the expenses for the entire city budget. And then the last two will be the revenues and expenses for the general fund budget. Uh, most notably, what I'd ask you to, to look at is the total revenue number of $762 million. That is, six, uh, that is $157 million higher than this current year of $605 million and change. Okay. The difference is what we'll talk about in the next couple of slides, but they all relate to things that the city manager just talked about. Uh, one being uh, the stormwater project that we'll be doing in and around the, the uh, Bonnet Springs Park and that watershed area of, of just a little less than $43 million. Okay, Those revenues are going to be captured in here. Okay, uh, We also have uh, half of the wastewater project that was just approved uh, of $17.8 million, uh, $8.9 million is shown here as increased in revenues to the ARPA funding. And then we have $100 million in debt proceeds for the first phase of the rice engines with Lake and Electric as well as the substation <coughs> that we talked about. Okay, Those are most notably in the second line 
titled All Other Revenues. There's about $90 million or so of additional uh, debt proceeds in there. The intergovernmental line, fourth line down, was $69 million uh, dollars, uh, captures or anticipates the, the, the uh, accounting for the $42.986 million dollars, uh, for Bonnet Springs Park. Okay. Uh, and we've got a slight increase in property taxes. Uh, that 51 million is two, there's two parts to that. There's a CRA portion that went from about 7.5 million this year to estimated at 8.3 million for next year. And then we're going to anticipate a, a growth of our property tax revenues to the general fund of 38.8 million to 42.7 or $8 million as, as well. <clears throat> okay, so that makes up the 51 million. So what's that look like on the expense side? Well, looking at the, at the top line, fuel and purchase power, as you know, that's a pass-through for Lakeland Electric. That's increased about, about six, uh, $6 million versus last year, and that, that can have big swings, as, as we know, and as, as the fact that we're doing some purchase power, we anticipated it would go up slightly. Uh, personnel, just through normal growth, that's, that's gone up by the one and a half, and then those that are eligible for the two and a half, and then as, as C. Manager alluded to, those in the collective bargaining agreements, whatever is negotiated there. Uh, capital outlay, that's about $100 million higher than what you would look at this year. And again, that is that directly is directly related to the rice engines, the first phase of the rice engines and the, the substations. Uh, debt service is, is elevated as well, uh, about eight, eight, nine million dollars, same way. Just the first first portion of the debt associated with with taking on the the, the new rice engines. Uh, the only other, I think, big piece is uh, all other operations and maintenance. We've seen a, a little bit of a growth there, anticipated growth, and that was uh, primarily water wastewater, all planned, all in their CIPs, so no surprises with 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 any of those. So. Uh, very definable, and then once these projects are complete, there's no reason why we shouldn't get back into the, the lower $600 million range for a normal budget. Okay? Mm -hmm. Next slide is the revenues associated with the general fund. If we looked at last year, fiscal year 21's budget, it would be about $2.9 million dollars less than this. So this has grown about $2.9 million net. Okay, I say net because what we recognize is that property taxes have gone up by about the $4 million we just talked about. Utility dividends are going up by, uh, by approximately $2 million, and that's all the, that's water, waste, water, and electric dividends. Uh, Charge, charges for services are up slightly, grants are up slightly, utility taxes we're seeing about a $2 million increase in that, and those amounts, the shared state, uh, state shared revenues are up, grants uh, are, are up, and those are going to fluctuate every year, so that's a great thing. Uh, but the prior year reserves, whereas last year we used, planned to use about $6.5 million in surplus, this year we're only using about $1.8 million in surplus. So that's how we net down to a growth of about 135 million, uh, a growth of about 3 million up to 135 million for the general fund. So let's look at it one last way, and that's by looking at it from the expense side. We've seen slight growth in police, fire, and public works directly related to just normal, normal personnel costs. That's pretty much all they are, is personnel costs. Uh, as a service organization. Uh, we saw a slight decrease in costs uh, in, in parks and, and community, uh, community and economic development. Those both dropped about 900,000 and 450,000 uh, respectively. Uh, the, everything else stayed fairly flat to, uh, to, to, to last year. So no, nothing really to raise our arms and, 
and, and draw attention to other than what we've just talked about. Any questions about those? Yes, sir. Mr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Brozart, going back to budget revenue sources, uh, we're up by $100 million, uh, you mentioned, from as, as opposed to last year, of course. 157, yes, sir. 157 million. Yeah, between and it's grants and debt proceeds from bar, from the bond issuance associated with the rice. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's all. Has, that's the biggest. That's the biggest, the biggest share. Yes, we got a we got a slight growth in charges for services, up. Mm, I think we were at 418 million. I think this year, and so it's about a 10 million dollar growth. Most of that is in electric. That, with that that I saw, so not not unusual. Okay, so we'll see. As you mentioned, that should fall down to what we normal a uh, normal normal says about six hundred some odd million versus once, once this. We, once we get through all the projects, and it's going to take a number of years yes. to get through them, it yes. will it will not be unreasonable to think that we'll be back in the in the mid low to mid sixes. Yes, sir. Being a service organization, we are going to see growth in personnel costs. That's just going to happen, right? And so those costs are always going to increase. So we want to say plan to stay at 605, right? It'll grow by something. But Commissioner right. McCarley. Yeah, and just to explain for the public, when you are talking about that Bonnet Springs Park grant, we are in partnership with them. They received a grant from the state of Florida through working with our staff and that $42.86 million looks like a revenue to us, but it gets expended back out there. We're, we're holding it basically for them just so the public understands that that's not our capital outlay out at the park. That is a partnership grant that comes to us because they need a governmental entity to hold it to then right. expedite it out to them. Yeah. So I just want to make that clear. So it's not a new City park, it's a private park, but we're just helping. We're actually out. not doing anything with the park. Ours is related to stormwater. Yes, ma'am. It's just stormwater improvements that are required for that lake area and the watershed coming into it and leaving it. Yeah. So, yes, ma'am. Commissioner Walker. But but we are now, I'll, I'll make sure we do know, we do understand that 43 million is, is what, you know, that's when the governor was here and we were able to get that award. But now as far as the work has been done on the entrance, I am I saying this correct? Yes. This I'm just talking about this this revenue. That's different. Right. That's but the entrance that that the city manager was sharing with us over on um, Chase, that's what yes. we're doing. Yes. yes. Okay. I want to make sure people understand that too because it's still because the work is being going on right now. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank separate, you. Separate and apart. Yes. And, and for further clarity purposes, that that what that's a mitigation project. Right. So it really is everything Bonnet Springs and beyond yeah. that, that we utilize that. Yeah, because okay. it's going to help Main Manor and all the other mm -hmm. right. surrounding area there, Brunel Park and all. Yes. Right. Any other comments by commissioners or questions? Okay, we'll slide on to, us, uh, to the, the next slide that you, you have uh, seen uh, ad nauseum from, from us, and that's simply Reminding you that that uh, the process we we advertised the 5.4644 mills. Uh, that's what we calculated this budget on. Uh, however, you absolutely have the right to to vote on something less than that tonight, uh, and and that's that'll you know Palmer will get to that point uh, with the tentative uh, millage vote in a little bit. Uh, we've got the rollback millage rate of 5.202. The maximum simple majority millage is 5.4323, and then the recommended millage. So the last slide that we wanted to show you is something that, that we've all seen and talked about. This is our day's cash slide, uh, and, and as the city manager talked about in his first assumption slide, we want to shoot for between ideally between 45 and 60 days cash on hand by the third year out, which is 2024. Okay, third year being we're talking about fiscal year 22. Uh, this budget includes it's well it's 5.4644 mills and it includes the Taser body and in-car camera system. So I'm going to stop there and and if you have any questions about this slide or whatever else that you'd like to 
start discussing. Uh, we can answer any questions. Well, one of the things that we could discuss, and you may or may not have prepared, are two additional slides that would show the threshold and the rollback right. of days. And I think that would be good if we could look at those if you have them. We do. Okay, I suspected you would. <laughs> yep. I was, looking past you at, I was looking past you at Sean in case he wanted to say something. That's, well, only yeah. that, you know, what has been prepared again was based on the last directive that we received um, from the commission, but knowing that there would be options that you would want to look at. So, so we have those prepared and, and can cover those now at, at your direction. I, wouldn't that be the best thing for us to look at? Okay. Yes. yes. So you'd like to look at 5.4323. Yeah. Leaving the body cam system in? Yes. Yes. Okay. That is this. That is a two day drop by 24 to 58. Um, do you want to show us the next one as well? Okay. The, the 5.2020. Oh, we don't have the 5.2020. You didn't do that. Yes. Okay. The last time we had all talked, yes, it didn't did. sound like anybody was interested in the, okay. the true rollback rate, so I'm okay. sorry we didn't prepare that. Now we can compile it. That's all right. Okay. I, I wouldn't. It was, in the, it was in the low 40s. Okay. For, for a day's cash, but I'd be glad to. I've got my spreadsheet available that I can do that if you decide you want to do that. Commissioner Music. Could you um, explain for um, everybody here, when we're talking about day's cash on hand, what does that mean from a dollar standpoint? So when they're looking at that um, number, they can see how what a number we're talking about. Sure, sure. So what, what that is, is, is we're simply looking at the total budget, budgeted expenses for any certain year and divide it by the number of days. So for example, in fiscal year 22, if we took the 136 million 758 divided by 365, you're in the 360 day range, 362, 363 day range. So $363,000 a day. So each day is worth about 360. Right, and then yeah. as, as the expenses go up by year, so does your, the, the day's cash required. So you're probably by 24, you're probably in the $375,000 a day range. It's not material change, but it, it, know that it's not static if your expenses are going up. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Commissioner Walker. I think it's important too, as Commissioner Music has already pointed out, you know, about the uh, day's cash on hand, but why do we want to keep um, that particular number of days cash on hand, why is it important? And you could probably explain it better than any of us because of being the finance director, what we look for, <clears throat> what rating agencies are looking for and those kind of things. Why do we do it? Why do we need to have X amount of days of cash on hand? Right, it, 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 for, for a number of reasons. Um, I would say the first is, is simply because it's, it's good, prudent, and, and efficient use of, of the taxpayers' money. We, we saw in, in 04 when the hurricanes came through, it cost us $28 million. We were able to cover that with cash. Uh, that is important because it didn't mean that we had to go back and ask the citizens for anything to, to help us in that. Exactly. We don't want to overcollect, right. which, is, is, which is why we came up with a recommended range, and that range was based on what we found among our peers as an accepted, uh, accepted uh, range uh, in in the in the finance in a governmental finance world, that 45 to 60 days was a reasonable range to use, uh, and and then uh, to your point, uh, Commissioner, the the third item is when we uh, meet with the rating agencies for for different bonding opportunities, not only bonding opportunities, but we are reviewed annually and semi-annually depending on the rating agency by uh, Moody's, Fitch, or S and P. And one of the items in their matrix are days cash on hand 
for the, for the general government, and then for like electric, because they have their own rating, and then for our water wastewater system, which has its own <coughs> rating. So today's cash is important for a number of reasons. Uh, and the benefit of high rating is important because? Because the better the rating, the lower the interest cost when you go borrow money. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and that does directly reflect in the, you know, in the, in the pockets of, of all of our citizens. Commissioner Reed. Mike, did you also prepare a slide about without the cameras? Yes, sir. Can we see those, please? Yes, sir. So the next slide is the current millage of 5.4644, but it excludes the body cam system, and that excludes it for all three years. Okay, that, that does not assume that it comes in at 23 or 24. It's just not in there at all. Okay? Mm-hmm. This next slide is 5.4323, which is, again, the maximum uh, simple majority that, that you could choose of four votes. And, and uh, that, again, excludes the, the body cam system. So it would appear we have two items of discussion that we ought to look at. Uh, yes, Commissioner Madden. I would go ahead and move to accept the... 5.4323 simple majority required with including the body cams. Is there a second? Second. There a motion and a second discussion by commissioners. Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I, I, I'm, I was leaning toward keeping, of course, as, as we had said and shared with staff to make sure we maintain our current um, millage rate of 5.4644 but seeing, you know, how we can still support and give back to our citizens here in our city, um, as we look at the uh, simple majority millage threshold situation, along with, you know, providing the, um, what we call the BWM, body one cameras and the, and the uh, in-car system, camera system that we need to that we, uh, we have inclusive of that. I just thought we had a win-win situation there. You're giving back something to the citizens, as well as capturing something that has been asked of us. And, and we know, as I see and have seen, there will probably be something that will move toward the future anyway. And we're moving toward that particular moment in, in this time. So I, I second your motion, um, Commissioner Mann, because I was thinking along those terms, especially so to see what we have win-win situation to support giving something back to our citizens as well as capturing what have been asked of us as well. Other comment, Commissioner Reed. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me get a drink of water here. As, as you're probably aware, I'm pretty conservative on the group, but um, uh, the body cameras give me issue, obviously, uh, and of course, Overall, again, to go over our economic components, um, from the last time we had a meeting, I think we're having more defaults on loans. Uh, our uh, taxes or their abatements getting ready to stop on rent as well as our mortgage payments. Uh, our uh, unemployment is going to stop September 15th, I think, for all of our people that are on unemployment. Uh, we're getting inundated with our, at our last meeting, we're saying our hospitals are filling up with the Delta virus, and so I'm not sure about our economy. Uh, I, I, there's a mu out right now, too, that's coming this way. How these people know it, I don't know. They say in November it's gonna be one called Terra, already coming out. I read today uh, in Texas is gonna hit the southern states. There's some kind of new, uh, it's not a virus, but some kind of Super spreader bug that's in Texas now. I don't know if it's coming through the uh, immigrants from coming in from South America, but it's mostly in the Central America area and coming this way. That's I just pause it. Our, they're going to try to. I think our government's going to try to shut us the economy down, and we're going to become weaker. We're going to lose jobs and stuff like that. Uh, also, uh, as our police the chief said that. Uh, we've only, I think, we've only had like 15 offenses uh, that were issues that would have been determined by cameras in the last five years. And this is going to cost us a million dollars a year. That's a $300,000 a piece. That's a big expense for 
having to phrase something that we may not have to issue have a, a, a problem with. Um, uh, I'll just pause at that, and then uh, of course some of us, fortunately not me, are going to be up for election. It's going to cause our property taxes to go up. I'm, I like the 5.32. I, I like that part. I like, and, but uh, fortunately, I'm not running this time, so uh, I'm sure you'll get crucified sometime in, on your election of some sort. But that's and I, if with, with all this takes place, then I think our six percent growth in 2023 may be high, and surely in 24, I think five may be high. There again. I don't have uh, a magic uh, crystal ball either, but uh, being in the real estate business and reading the tea leaves, I guess you say, and reading national reports, things are gonna slow down. They can't continue as they are. And so that's why, uh, again, I just don't think we have an extra million dollars a year to put into the cameras. I think we're gonna need it in the, in the future. Uh, I do support the 5. Uh, I mean, it's 5.43, Two three, but I can't support the uh, body cameras. Uh, Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Mayor, and and I think many of you have said before we come into this situation with a low millage rate. We're blessed to have a low rate, and so if we're able to roll it back slightly, I, I think that's great. I support that. Um, Mike, you and I have talked about just the cost of body cameras going into the future, and there's still some unknowns with that. We don't know, we're working with estimates, we particularly wouldn't know if we had a 10-year contract, if we're, what year six through 10 look like, and I, I do think that's important for the discussion is if we fund body-worn cameras in this budget year, I know we still have to go through a contract and get that approved, and that would come back before the commission, but there are costs that into the future, 10 years potentially, that, that we need to be mindful of. Yes, Could sir. You that's, expound that's, on that a bit? Yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, uh, Chief Garcia and his team uh, hosted one possible vendor to learn about the uh, combined system that, that provided all of these as, as they start the learning process uh, as, you know, at, at, at the behest of the commission. And, and so uh, they invited me over to, to talk with them as, as they got towards the end of their day. And, and one of the things they did talk about is, is fixed costs for the first five years and then uh, it would have some sort of increase in the future they did not indicate what that would be uh, this is it's not just software uh, we can usually estimate uh, Oscar Torres and his team can usually estimate okay here's what we think software costs are going to go up when we buy a multi-million dollar system because this is so much hardware as well we we don't want we don't want to tell you it's three percent or five percent in case it's more, we just don't know. It may be less. Um, you know, maybe we can get a 10-year deal and and see small growth in years five through 10. Uh, uh, we just we don't have that answer. And those are details that we would know going into a contract approval. Oh, absolutely. So yes, we would have that because I do think those are. We'd have there to is know one, that. Yes, if there's, I would say the biggest thing that gives me pause about funding body-worn cameras in this budget, it's, it's the long-term commitment and funding commitment that would outlast even you know, this commission. And I look at other, I, I was going back to that list of our priorities, the RP Funding Center and reducing the subsidy, I still think we're oversubsidized there. Mm -hmm. And so can we simultaneously, if, if body-worn cameras are approved, work to reduce that subsidy? I think over the long-term that's going to be critical that's from, from my viewpoint. So. Some of which then offsets that, is what you're saying. Yes. Right. Commissioner Matt McCarley. Sorry. No, we're all women. We look <laughs> um, so I have a question about this package includes body cams in it, but we, for me, our discussion for this fiscal year was we have to do the tasers and in-car system, right? Mm -hmm. Are they, they're up, and so we have to. I'm, I'm going to ask either Hans or, or Chief Garcia to answer that question because I think there's some options they have with that and I don't want to speculate. Yeah. And where I'm going with this too is once as the chief walks up here, um, a little different than Commissioner McLeod is I think that, that body-worn cameras are gonna come down the road 
you know, regardless of this budget year or not. So I think it'll be either in, it'll be in the following year, but there are also a lot of indirect costs. There's cybersecurity that's involved with data management and there's also redaction. And there are things that open us up not only to the pressures that we have right now, but to um, being liable in a lot of different cases in public records. And it's a two dimensional view of what happens. It's not a full, I think some people think that we get body cameras and you're gonna have police give you the same kind of view that you have in a movie set where you have every angle covered and you're over and you're under and it's not like that at all. But I, while you're up at the podium, I just wanted some clarity on when we have to replace the tasers and the in-car systems, if that is imminent right now, and if there are different packages and how this looks financially for us and what the game plan is. If we, we know what it is with body cams, but I want to know what it is without body cams. Uh, good evening, uh, Ruben Garcia, Chief of Police. Uh, yes, uh, the in-car cameras are put into the uh, the budget for our cars, as new cars come online, they're figured into that process, about a $6,000 uh, add-in to the cost of the vehicles as the vehicles come out on the streets. So that is already budgeted in for in-car cameras. Our tasers are at about seven years. The recommendation is five. So we are over replacing them. Although they're, they're not, not working, it is just the best recommendation, the best industry standards to replace them. Uh, moving with the body cameras, of course, the cost of the cameras is very minimal. It is the infrastructure, as you spoke about. If we're going to go the route of the body cam, then it is certainly wise to update our tasers and our in-car cameras with that. Neither one of them are at a critical juncture where that has to happen today, but they certainly will have to happen down the road. And while you're here, because you're our subject matter expert, um, I know that there are every sides to this. I've been called and emailed and talked about this with several different people, including um, a family friend who's actually a tactical FBI agent um, in another city. And do you have, you know, it seems like there's both sides of the argument, but do you have a stance on this, Chief, where you're absolutely adamant that this has to happen this year? Uh, no, I do not. Uh... We, we will certainly work within the decision and we will deploy them and we'll get the best use out of them. Uh, we, we certainly expect to be able to use them to uh, gather better evidence. Uh, arrest will certainly go up, uh, tickets will certainly go up with them. So uh, there is some positive to them. Uh, it is certainly an opportunity to uh, see limitedly what occurs out in the field. It, it's certainly, uh, we will not have the camera system the NFL has and we can't get a uh, replay right on that system apparently. So uh, going in it wide open, it, it is not a say all be all to what happens. It is just a small component of figuring out what occurs in these incidents. But uh, it is certainly another dimension that will help us uh, determine what has occurred out in the street. And then in addition to that, you know, while you're up here, I'm sorry, I keep bothering you. But um, when we're talking about, I know this applies if we do do this, that it has two staff people who will do all the operations and, and perform all the operations. What does our um, tech team say about cybersecurity and protecting that data? And then legally within statutory of the state of Florida, how long do you keep that data? Like what are the policies and procedures that will accompany this and who makes those decisions? Uh, that, that is by state law, the uh, date that we have to retain it. Uh, I believe video is 90 days, uh, but we'll have to retain it to the set schedule of the state. Uh, the redaction comes when there's stuff, uh, information like under Marcy's law of a victim of a crime that can't be released that has to be redacted before that can be shared to the public. So there, there is uh, quite a bit of behind the scene work it takes to be able to give these videos out once they're uh, recorded. And what are some of the costs that you, I know we can't guess in that 10 years what year six through 10 looks like financially for us and for the city, because you know so we won't be here when that happens if we sign a 10 year contract, but what are some of those indirect costs? Like if we start to see more technology evolve and also if we start to see more public records requests and the staffing issues and the costs that come along with that, what, how does that work and, and who makes that game plan? Uh, actually, the citizens would drive that. If, if there was more public records requests, there may be a time when we would need more personnel to be able to timely provide those records, which we certainly have to do by statute. Uh, I don't see any 
cost other than what we've talked about uh, coming up other than as we continue to increase in population, you would expect for us to continue to increase in the size of the police department. So that would certainly require more equipment, more officers in the field, it's going to create more video and more storage will be needed. So it will grow like everything else, like our fleet of vehicles, weapons, communication center. It would all grow in pace with the amount of officers that we would need to properly police the city. Thank you, sir. Appreciate yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, Commissioner Reed. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Chief, for being here. Uh, I thought at one time you said it might be a, a political decision. Maybe I was incorrect on that, but uh, uh, do you think we need them at this point? Our data does not say that we need them. Uh, as you mentioned, we have about 15 complaints a year that goes into an internal <coughs> affairs investigation. But there is certainly more sides to that equation. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of citizens here this evening, I would suspect, primarily in support of them. So uh, we are the Citizens Police Department. If that's a piece of equipment the citizens want us to wear and they wish to bear the burden of that cost, then we'll put them on and march forward. I'm assuming if we gave you a million dollars, you'd buy something else. So is that a fair statement? If I was given a million dollars, uh, <laughs> there is some uh, programs at the police department that I'm quite proud of, like our PAL program and our neighborhood liaison program that I would certainly choose to invest money in. Thank you. Commissioner Music. Um, yeah, can I follow up on just a statement you made there? Right, you know, when you're talking about the number of uh, potential issues we have that get kicked up to internal affairs, can you kind of walk me through how a, how a customer or a customer, uh, a citizen complaint walks through that system and ends up, ends up getting resolved? Sure. Uh, we, we take complaints uh, through any means. So we'll even take an anonymous complaint. All complaints get vetted out. Uh, if they rise to a policy violation, and internal affairs investigation started. Uh, the law allows for 180 days for that to process through the investigation. And that is an investigation just like any other investigation where all the witnesses and evidence is collected and went through and at the end there's a determination made and that's uh, vetted out throughout the entire chain of command of the subject officer. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, have, Commissioner Walker? Sorry. And then Commissioner Reed. No, no, you're fine, you're fine. Uh, you mentioned, and this kind of resonated with me when you said if you could just have a million dollars what you would put toward so am I hearing you say, Chief, that our power program, which we, we could uh, consider being a premier operation mm -hmm. and has been for years and has been even in my years of tenure being on this diet in the last 12 years, seen it to grow and be able to capture what we wanted. The essence of the program was all about was our youth, moving it from a, a one room kind of situation to now a building and, and having other, other kind of components added to it. Are we lacking? We can certainly always do more, and uh, there's no better place to do it than with our youth. Uh, older folks tend to get set in their ways. We, we all do. It's just human nature. We make our best, biggest impact with our children, uh, and that, that is a great opportunity. It, it is an opportunity that we have an opportunity to expand on. Yes, sir. And with, the, with what we're talking about moving down the road with PAL, is, you know, as I hear it and hear the conversation being had with the program and hopefully its future, those things will come anyway. I, I, that's what we plan to do, is it not? A absolutely, absolutely. Okay. We, we anticipate okay. to continue to build that program. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Reed. Thank you. And this may be Mike's and answer this and Again, it's kind of on the same subject, but a little bit off. And if people have asked me, and they need, I think they need to hear it, what do we do with the red light money? And how does that affect? And is it, is it going up? Is it going down? The, the red light money <clears throat> is, just goes into the general fund like any other revenue. If somebody goes and, and, and uses Kelly Rec, those revenues go into the general fund. It's just a line item. I looked tonight in anticipation of the question, and it looks like it's up slightly over the last couple years. 
Um, it's, it was around 500,000 net. It's closer to 600,000 net uh, between what we are what we are sending uh, American traffic systems uh, as, as as well. So we're That's about 600,000 net to the general fund annually. Annually, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Manning. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And um, it, just because you're here, I, I would love for you and for all of LPD to hear that, um, you know, the genesis for this discussion and for this appropriation was certainly last summer. And I think everyone knows, you know, because of the George Floyd murder that we had community conversations on what we could do collectively to make a difference. I believe that we do have a great PAL program and a great neighborhood liaison, that we do community policing, and that's why we didn't see rioting in Lakeland like we saw in other cities. Because you've been intentional to build relationship with some of the folks who are in the room tonight, with so many folks around the city. And so first of all, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for that, that we have not had the situations here that we've seen in other places because of the stellar work that you and your team have done. On that note, I would say if I had a million dollars, I would move the PAL into the fire station, move them, and I would, I would put it into PAL because honestly, I'm a mom of six, my boys have played PAL, and that's what I would choose. I also appreciate the SROs in our classrooms who become heroes to our kids at school and our NLOs who are in the neighborhoods and at our community events before they have to experience a 911 call, and I think that makes all the difference. But I also know that we had a shooting at Salem and that we did have a situation at the corner of Memorial and that we are maybe one day, no one wakes up and says, this is the day I wanna have a shooting or this is the day I wanna have a riot. And I do feel like this is the way the world is going with technology. And I see all of the folks out here that are tonight representing a community voice and the people who've reached out to me with emails and spoken to me and it really doesn't matter what Stephanie Madden at the end of the day thinks. It matters what the citizens think, and we've been listening. And I want the citizens in here tonight, and the citizens who have been to all of the meetings, all of the meetings that we've hosted for Lift Lakeland, all of the meetings that we had at the community conversations, to know that this decision, first of all, providentially, we have the extra money, which is a miracle after a year of pandemic. It is, it is absolutely a miracle that we even have this money to allocate. And we saw that it was a million four, and then our staff worked and brought back a million one, and we can still do uh, a little bit of a property tax cut. I, I can't help but think providentially that this is what we're supposed to do as a city. I hope it doesn't mean that we'll have any reason to need them. I hope that we continue with our positive efforts and that we have continue to build bridges and have a community that loves everyone and celebrates our diversity. But. I just feel like this, after listening to everyone and trying to see it from all the other angles, um, I feel like this is our moment um, to do this. And I think it's significant that we're doing it ahead of the necessity. We're not doing it as a result to the national narrative. We're not doing it as a result of a tragedy. We're just doing it as a, as a result of community conversations with our citizens, trying to listen and be the very best city we can be. And I know that you've already, in my opinion, been one of the best police forces in the country. Um, and I think that my effort is not to diminish that. It's only to go in a direction that I see that we're headed nationally anyway. Um, and so I just wanted to also just share my heart with the folks in the room, with you as our chief, and to, to make sure both sides feel like that we, as your city commission, have not just been having meetings to have meetings, that we've been listening, and we really want to have the very best community with the very best opportunities, leaving no one behind, and certainly not having any of the tragedies that we see on TV. Yes, ma'am, thank you for those kind of words. <laughs> um. I'm gonna make, that is great. I'd like to just make one more, one more, when I ride in the car, I have my three-year-old grandson, and every time he sees a police car, he gets really excited, and a fire truck, by the way. But, but right now, he wants to be a policeman, so uh, he's, he's, he's really excited when he sees our police department. And again, you know, when your, your social activities you do uh, are a great uh, display of, of the work you do to, to the general public, I agree, but thank you. Thank you, sir. And if I may add, and that's good, Commissioner Reed, and it's good, Commissioner Madden, but in some communities, you don't have that. 
and you don't have it, not that we're not doing it, not that we're not, you know, our profile is not where it should be and what we want it to be, but it's unfortunate that some things do happen that's ugly. It has happened, even me being an example of what has happened some years back. So when I was asked you know, about someone, many ones have asked about why am I taking a stand? I'm taking it. I said, well, you know, I believe it's just going to be a positive move that needs to happen in our community. Mm -hmm. And we've been asked by citizens, as you already indicated, but they can also share with those who don't feel that they're, you know, that they're, they're, the, the, the good feeling of, of, of a, like you said, your grandson, and don't feel that they have that. You know, that's what we're here for in this community, are we not? To make sure we all have the, the, have the same kind of good feel that we all want to have. And you just said it. You're a citizen police department. You have citizens who ask for certain things. And if we can do it and provide it, why not? Um, you can have a seat, sir, if you like. Thank you. I'm, I would like to make a statement. Um, I strongly urge my fellow commissioners to include body cameras in the fiscal year 22 budget and believe now is the time to do so. To the extent, extent that I've even written these notes down just because I don't want to miss anything that I'm communicating. Before I explain why I want to applaud this commission, and we have honored all citizens as a matter of course since this inception, and I really am grateful to sit in a commission that does that. Uh, and we performed marvelously in this manner despite COVID during very unusual times. And I am grateful for that. And, and last summer's listening moments, as we talked about. Beginning in 2018, we listened well. We avoided entanglements with national rhetoric. We made decisions that protected public safety. And we stayed Lakeland focused. Providing LPD with body cams is a decision that considers our local citizen input and it is contra to defunding police efforts. It's supportive of them. Instead, it will strengthen their available tools as we have also already supportively strengthened their compensation and thoroughly support their training programs. As we consider this budget expense, we must remember that this expense goes well beyond the body cameras. It includes the in-car videos. It includes the very necessary uh, upgrade in tasers. And there's a significant difference in tasers today versus the ones that we have. And it also provides the computer software conversion that is necessary, making this a simultaneous single commitment allows these efforts to be fully integrated with the most comprehensive, comprehensive system today and at the least total cost if we do it all at the same time. And it is a system that minimizes the amount of shift time lost when using body cams because there are systems that require a lot of download. These are in-car downloads. Sure, in making this decision, there is a cultural and workload change. It will increase public record requests. It will change uh, what people do on a daily basis. It will impact policing, and it becomes a significant ongoing ex expense. So the benefits from body cameras must offset those considerations, because we are admittedly don't know necessarily what our outward costs will be over time. But you're, there has to be some sense of believing that we can figure out how to manage those things after we make the decision on whether or not to apply them. So here are some of the compelling reasons why I believe our commission should include this provision in the budget. Number one, adding body cameras to our policing is the single most significant request of any component expressed from citizens as we listened. Number two, body cameras are the next wave of technology for policing and agencies that use them remain enthusiastic about them. We don't talk to agencies that say, oh, I wish we'd never done it. They say, no, we like them. We'd like, we'll, we'll keep them. Why is that? Because there are benefits. Our LPD survey with agency finds they're glad that they made the change. Number three, as we recruit from out of state, those who have worn body cameras welcome the fact we are considering them and are used to wearing them. In fact, it can be a recruiting benefit that we have them. Number four, our citizens will be provided with a greater sense of mutual accountability from their perspective when confronted by an officer. And this is a big, big issue. So this is an issue that you can't put dollars and cents on. This is an issue that knows that we have the same level of accountability when people are stopped and that we have the opportunity to have increasing confidence that I'm being treated comparably. 
Number five, the footage provides terrific opportunities for monitoring and training to help continuously improve the way we police daily. So it is a way we sharpen our swords. If you put a camera in my office, and by the way, I, I'm subject to being able to have a camera in my office, and I review those tapes, it can sharpen the way that I have a phone conversation and the way I do my work. And that's why once that becomes a matter of course, it just becomes a tool for getting better. Number six, Often, officers are acquitted by the footage when reviewed following a customer complaint. And many times, customer complaints get round up as being more extreme than they actually were. And the wonderful part about the video is that it shows what really occurred for either side's part benefit. We're blessed that we are not considering deploying them because we have an overt citizen input problem, but rather that they will already be deployed if problems occur in the future. They take over a year to get deployed and to put together. And then if we're tying it together with a system that's integrated and have people that are accelerating the conversion and doing it on a cost-effective basis, then we have that um, public satisfaction that will remain high. And seven, this investment in public safety is not a replacement for more officers on the street. It's not a replacement for PAL. It's not any one of those things. This is mutually exclusive strategically providing citizen desired uh, responsibility that creates accountability. Um, L if LPD wants to add officers at another time in the future, this commission will consider that budget item separately, but additional officers are not a request in fiscal year 22. Again, these are mutually exclusive. And finally, rather than defunding police, Deploying the upgraded tasers, in-car cameras, computer system integration, and body cameras further equips our extraordinary department to become even better prepared. For this reason, I provide the most resounding appeal for your consideration possible to approve this budget item as a means of further securing public safety and support for our police by voting yes to its inclusion. Are there any comments from the public? Uh, Mr. Mayor, before yes. we open it up for public discussion, the formal action that the City Commission has to take tonight is the tentative approval of a uh, millage rate ordinance and a budget ordinance. So I'll need to read a title into the record before opening it up to public discussion. But okay. I just want to reiterate that although these are tentative approvals tonight and that you'll, you'll have a final budget hearing and, and adopt the final millage rate and budget on the 23rd, whatever millage rate you establish tonight becomes the cap of what you can adopt on the 23rd. So if you adopt 5.4323, you cannot exceed that uh, going forward. On the 23rd. That's Correct. tonight's word. Correct. <coughs> so uh, with that, I, I, I need to read the uh, title to the okay. uh, first ordinance, the millage rate ordinance into the record. All right. That is proposed ordinance number 21-038. An ordinance relating to ad valorem taxation, establishing the millage rate for the city of Lakeland, Florida for the fiscal year commencing October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2022, providing for the levy of ad valorem taxes, finding the millage rate is 4.43% greater than the rolled back rate, providing an effective date. And I also need to state for the public record that the uh, tentative millage rate contained in this ordinance will be 5.4323 uh, mills. Uh, the rollback rate is 5.2019 mills, and uh, the difference between those two is 4.43%. Is, is so the proposed rate of 5.4323 is a 4.43% increase over the rollback rate. All right. And, and so I would actually need a, the, 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 the uh, motion in second to be to that ordinance. And, and just for that amount, I mean, just with respect to that and no expenses. Uh, right. We'll take up the budget right. ordinance the second, uh, at the second. Yes. Is so, so I believe so, uh, I believe Commissioner Madden made a motion to approve that village rate, and, and and Commissioner Walker seconded that. I would just need those motions and seconds to be in reference to the to the ordinance. So do you comply? Yes. And both. Okay. They are. Right. Um, Commissioner Music. Yeah, I I wanted to to echo some some things that I have heard um, before before I cast my vote on that. You know, I am the newest sitting commissioner. So when I look at the um, the retreats you were on the budget things, I mean, and then I come in in July, a lot of that stuff was I mean, you guys had, had already been talking about the train is the train is gone. Um, so I've been trying to play catch up and, and then uh, getting the list of, of 30 plus things that, that you guys had come up with that were important. Um, and then seeing seeing some of those things like the body worn cameras move up the, the list. Um, but, 
you know, as I sit here and I look at the, the day's cash on hand um, with inclusion of the body worn cameras, I mean, I see, I see a, a scary trend in the day's cash on hand, right? 73, 75, 70, and then all the way to 58 in fiscal year 24. Um, and, and we're going off of the assumption, like Commissioner Reed said, that what if we have something come up and, and our economy is, is not as strong as we think it is uh, potentially going to be? Um, and, and that makes me nervous. I mean, that's a, that's a huge jump. And, and we've all said here that any, any education that we have doesn't tell us exactly where these body cameras are gonna cost in, in the years in the future. We just don't know. But by voting yes for it um, now and then as, as it comes up, we're, we're snookering ourselves. We're saying that, that whatever it is, we're gonna pay it. And then if we go with an integrated system, potentially we're even in a more difficult position because it's the same person that's giving us the software, the hardware, and, and everything. And, and I, I have pause for that because I'm not looking in the future and seeing positive increases in days cash on hand, which is our savings. We haven't had bad hurricanes come in a while, but it's going to happen. So, so I want to know that we are fiscally strong so that at that time we don't have to come when we have a, a potential disaster. Maybe the economy comes down and then we're coming back to the citizens and saying, I need more. Well, my and, comment would be that this does anticipate the economy comes down in the budgeting years immediately outbound. We're 6%, 5% for 23 and 20. Correct. Assuming, right. uh, assuming, assuming those amounts. I guess that's what I'm right. saying. So, it's, so assuming, that's part of that. Assuming that those are the amounts. So, you know, I just, I, you know, it's, it's, it's really because we, we really have two, two sides of this, right? We have... We have the side that, that, that the mayor just spoke of and that you spoke of, and then we have the fiscal side of it. And, and, and from a fiscally responsible position, I just, I, I can't vote for that. So I just, I wanted to, to understand, um, I wanted you all to understand why that was and, and for the citizens and for those here. So thank you. So, and are you discussing the rollback rate that you're talking about? Is that, correct. because well, that's really well, all we want correct. to be talking what about. We're talking about now, that's correct. So, yes. Um, and remember, the commission's goal was 45 to 60 days. Mm -hmm. That was the range. Okay, and, and that, that yeah. Was and what, so, and what what concerns me though is the target based on that, right? So we're talking about you know, we're talking about a system from from 45 to 60, which we've we've talked about how how blessed we are that we're in that position now. But all we have on that board, and we're still guessing at fiscal year 24. It's still going down lower, but we know our employees' fees are going to go up. We know pension. We know all these things are going to increase because it's increased. Now, roll back five or six years. It's the same thing. And, and that's, my, that's my concern is I don't have a crystal ball. We don't have a crystal ball. And we're making a decision on something that our very own police chief says we don't need it. Yes, he's not asking for more police officers, but he's also not asking for body cameras. But yet we're going to sit here and we're going to wrangle and, and, and put that burden on the city well after we're here. And that, that concerns me. Uh, Commissioner Walker and then Commissioner McLeod. Let me just add, from a historical perspective, and Mr. Brozart may speak to it as well, if you look at day's cash on hand, and as being the numbers you're seeing, we're trending down when it comes to fiscal year 24, we have been as low as 39 days cash on hand in outward years. And that's because of what we had decided to do back when we needed uh, additional uh, services when it comes to public safety for our city. I look at this being part of that public safety kind of situation as well. And am I, am I wrong, and Mr. Brozard? We went down as far as not days out. Now, we never reached it. Thank God we never did that. But we had a projection at one time with outlying years as much as, I think, 39 days of cash on hand one time. And I recall I it being was, just how many years back? I believe that was last year only. And I believe that that was simply because we used the assumption that we were going to lose 10% a year because all we had to go on was what happened uh, during the last financial crisis. And so we used that as an assumption of 10% a year drop. The commission said, let's put it as a placeholder because, frankly, we all hoped that it wouldn't be anywhere near that. As far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as I can remember, that is the only time it's ever been below, below 45 days. Yes, sir. 
is is that and i'll just i would i would just point to one thing it's something you've heard me say before go out one year look at 25 and you guys just decide what you think 25 might look like because and because what you want to do is think about what decision are you going to come to in 25 if in fact you if we hit those same measures Will you lose another 12 days? Will you be at 46? And what do you think you're going to want to do if we show you 46 days at that point? Again, it's, it's, it's the seven of you, but just to carry on what you, you're talking about, I think that's important to think through is what will you do when you get to 45 days? And hopefully it doesn't come. Hopefully we get above six and we get above five and we've moved the can down the road until we get another windfall. But just... Think, think, think through that for yourselves. Uh, Commissioner Reed. Thank you. Um, Mike, on our money we're getting from the hospital, what type of anticipated rate are you going to you anticipate on that money? The, the amount that we had said we wanted to earn was six and, six and a half, six and a quarter percent. Five on and that yes. six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. So is it six and a quarter or six and a half? It's on my six and a quarter. My, my sheet, it's, but it's, uh, it's, is is what it is. The 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 pension plans require seven and a half. Excuse me, seven and a quarter for the general employees, and it's think seven thirty five for the fire and and seven and a half for for police, and so we felt uh, something below that was going to be reasonable over time. So, okay, so if it dropped the point, it was about, what, 2.1 million a year or something like that, or? I don't understand the question. If we dropped 1%, it'd be like 2.1 million a year. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's. And of course, again, you know, we're seeing massive, in, I think we're going to see massive inflation, too. That, 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 that scares me as well. Again, I'm, I'm waving the red flag, so, uh, but. Uh, I'd like to hear what these folks have to say personally. Well, we're going to stay on the rate first because that's what we're talking about here. Okay. Um, Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Brosart and Deidre, for your work in planning this and, and navigating with us and getting us through these different scenarios because I, it's, it's a difficult job you have, and we appreciate all the work that has gone into this. To Commissioner Music's point, and I appreciate your fiscal considerations and having those discussions because it does fall on us. That is, it is important that we are being good stewards of, stewards of public dollars. I, I do think the, the next step of a contract, of having those additional details, will provide some clarity. I don't know if that's uh, helpful to you or gives you any, you know, any comfort in this debate that we're, um, by putting this into the budget, there's still an extra step that gives us more details of what, what are those costs uh, over the 10-year period. I think that once we put something in a budget, we've put it in motion, so it's going to be irrelevant. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to foolishly spend money at that point, but if, if, if we approve to go forward, we're going to go forward. I, mean, I, I would love an example of when that wasn't the case. Well, it gives us a second look. It gives us, there's another step. There is another review to look at the details, and the details are important. And um, so it's just, just to, to kind of, as you mentioned, concerns about, hey, we don't know what those years six through 10 look like, and I'm with you, but I think we will have more clarity once this budget is approved and then a contract or proposed contract comes back to us. Yeah. Well, let's stay, keep our comments on the millage threshold. Sure. Um, so on the millage threshold, any other comments about whether or not, why you would not want to roll back to the 5.4323 given this opportunity? All right, any from the public at all on the millage rate, millage rate? It's kind of hard to separate the two. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's hard to separate included in the rate. Rate, I well, we, with respect to this threshold, it's not, because we have to make a decision one or the other. We can only talk about them as one item or the other, correct? So we're going to talk about the budget secondly. I, I don't know if, if the mills rate is affected by what you decide to budget, including body cameras, but I, I don't think there's any problem with having discussion of the body cameras in conjunction with the mills rate ordinance. That was not my understanding about what you were trying to accomplish. I thought you were trying to bifurcate the two. We do have to have separate votes, but the discussion, I think, bleeds over between the two. So I, I don't think there's a, a problem with opening a more general discussion up at this point, Great. if that will help the city commission's deliberation on the ordinance. 
Please state your name and and uh, they would help. And we will have our discussion. Good afternoon to the mayor, to the commissioners. My name is Kenneth Glover. I'm here with many organizations. I'm the chairman of the Legal Redress Committee with the NACP Concerned Citizens and other organizations. Uh, I think the mayor, with his written statements, has said what I wanted to say and concisely. And if you commissioners were listening, all the data has been set forth on why we need body cameras. This is not something new for the city commissioner. We've gone on four years. The citizens here, many of them are sitting in the audience. We've been here from the starting out from the resistance of what the rest of America has been advocating and it has been proven a success from the federal, from the state. We are one of the few cities in the state of Florida that don't have body cameras. The complexity of it about the financing, the budgets, the millage rates, all of these cities all around the state of Florida and America has adopted the need for body cameras. It's been set forth why accountability. It protects police departments. It protects the citizens, the questionable actions of what is going on. We don't want to have to have the riots and all of that kind of stuff that's going on in our community where we are guessing. Even before George Floyd incident that ignited the nation, there were things that, as an African-American, I can tell you, we are concerned what has happened to us historically in our communities. I don't know whether or not it, you can't walk in my shoes if you haven't understood the oppression that we have endured in our communities and trust. Some of us don't trust law enforcement. I have a trust being the first black prosecutor in Polk County. I have two sons who are law enforcement. I trust them. I raise them to be law-abiding citizens. I'm not against law enforcement. I support them. I get along with the chief. We communicate. And you pass city managers. We have discussed and we have debated this. The questions that we are having, it's been answered by our neighboring cities and communities. It's not that complicated. The money is there. The citizens want it. And if you want equal justice here in our city, if you want to bring us together, just go ahead and vote and let's move forward so we can figure out what to do with COVID and other related matters that are more pressing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Glover. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. House of Boss is my name and I'm speaking on behalf of many organizations. I certainly want to thank you for your service and all that you do. But I want to also encourage you tonight to begin to take a broader look as to how God is using you at this very moment, at this very time to write history. You know, Paul said something in Romans chapter 13, verse number one. He said, all powers are ordained of God and are subject to the power of God. But he also said in Psalm 75 that all promotions come from God. So God had enabled you, this great body, who's doing some great work, even looking at the budget, even looking at exactly how you can write history. As our mayor have indicated, the need for accountability, but also a need for prevention. Law enforcement officials, all of them are not bad. But think about this very moment how it just might knock at your door. And you just might say, do we have any footage? But I want to encourage you tonight. It's not about finances. Budgets can be modified any moment, any time. We don't have a crystal ball, so we don't have any, any what I call psychic prognosticators. But one thing I don't want you to do tonight, miss this very moment 
where you, the governing body, who have been empowered by God with the delegated authority to make decisions, hearing the voices of your constituents, saying, we want protection. We want protection. God have elevated you and put you in a position to hear the voice of your community to say, hey, we want accountability, we want prevention, and we want you, when you go home at night, to look in that mirror and say, did I do the right thing? And the right thing is to say, let us put a system in place where we can protect ourselves, protect what I call public safety officials, our illustrious police chief, who I think and believe is doing a remarkable job. But you have been empowered not to look at the economics because you can find money. You can find money anywhere else. Am I right? You can modify that budget. We don't need you to look down the road and say, what if? We want you to take a look at, the, at your community, the community you represent, and say, I'm going to do what I've been empowered to do by God and his omniscience, knowing that this time, this moment, this hour, you are making one of the most critical decisions, not based on economics, but based on what is right. You have an opportunity to write history, write good history. You don't want to leave a legacy where you leave here tonight looking at economics and say, well, why didn't I do it? It doesn't make sense. I respect you. I love you. Thank God for having an opportunity to represent and to speak. Our illustrious mayor laid it out, said a lot of things that certainly I wanted to say, but I respect you. I appreciate you. Do not go home and say no to this decision. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm Terry Coney, uh, 422 El Salvador Drive, uh, president of the Lakeland Branch and WACP. Uh, I'll use the term, past performance is no guarantee of future results. Now, a lot of numbers have been thrown around. There's a lot of uh, statistics and percentages. And I know a lot of you when, you, when you ran for office, you used your experience as successful business people to uh, encourage people to vote for you. But being a business person, a, a, a business owner, versus being a commissioner or being any place in government and a leader in government is a totally different thing. You have fiduciary responsibilities to the public. And as the gentleman just said, budgets can be changed. The big issue here is public safety, public trust, transparency. As Commissioner Madden said earlier, we've gone back a, a, a year when we started having, having meetings. And, and, and the city of Lakeland, quite frankly, has been fortunate, it's been lucky. That, there was an incident that happened several years ago, as she mentioned, at Salem. The city of Lakeland is very fortunate that only one person got hit with a bullet. You can't look in the past and, 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 and decide what's going to happen in the future. There, there are all type of issues that are, that are taking place. Uh, Sheriff Judd mentioned the incident that happened last, last Sunday. There's a 49% drop in the crime rate, but yet and still, four people got killed. None of us know when another person with a mental health issue it's just gonna, gonna blow it, gonna lose it. So don't, we, we, you know, when we ask for these body cameras, it's an aid for our police force. My, I'm, not an opponent, I'm not against our police department. I, I'm, I'm for our police department. My organization is not for defunding the police, but for our city, this is a very needed tool, and I use the term tool. So, so please, don't think about what's happened in the past because it only takes one incident. We want to protect our officers from any type of litigation possible because you, know, you can put yourself in, you can pay me now, you can pay me later, and, and this is going to happen. 
I mean, there, 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 there's guidelines that came out in the past called 21st Century Policing. I know the mayor has, has the booklet, the poli police, chief, police chief has it, Commissioner Walker has it. So please, please, the public is asking you to bring, to bring this system online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, I'm Phyllis West. Um, sharing something, an incident that happened to me. I was sweeping off my front porch when two Lakeland police officers approached my house and cocked their guns and pointed it towards me. One officer asked me if anyone is in my house other than myself. He was very harsh and it frightened me. I told him my daughter, who was standing at the door, and my grandson. I also told him my name and their names. Shortly thereafter, I could hear another officer say, pull up and say, hold back your fire. Put down your weapons. Wrong person, wrong house. Let's go. They quickly proceeded around the corner and went to the other street. This has been a very humiliating and horrifying experience for me, my daughter, and my autistic grandson. As of this date, I have not heard from the police department other than giving me a complaint form after my pastor contacted the police department. This is why I strongly urge that the body cameras are needed. Um, my question is, is what if it had happened to one of you all. Grandchildren, children. All I did was woke up, went out, sweeping off my porch and this happened. So I hear you say we, what happened in the past, what, but it's now, this is now, this is real. And it's easy to say what we don't need, what don't need to happen, but if it were you, how would you expect for it to be handled? If it were you, any of anybody, how would you handle that? You wake up out of bed, mine on everyday tasks, sweeping off my porch. I'm sorry it's not gonna get it. And tell my family, well, we're sorry. We, We've heard that numerous of times. Something has to be done. I understand all this about the budget, the money, the this, the that. We're talking about lives here. Nobody can predict the future. We all talk about God, but what God are we talking about? What God are we serving? Because I serve a true and living God. And, and, and it don't have nothing to do with the finance, he'll supply all of our needs. That's where it comes from. We sit and we contemplate, where do we get this? Where do we put this? What do we do here? Do we ever stop to ask him what he wants? What, what do you want us to do? You, you, we say we love each other. We need to show it, express it. I would never dream of that happening to anybody. I never thought one day, I see it on television, I've listened to it on the news, but this was me. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, August uh, commissioners. Um, my name is John Ruffin. I'm the president of the Concerned Citizens of Polk County Incorporated and the president of the Concerned Citizens of Florida Incorporated. You all have been dubbed a visionary board because, why have you been dubbed a visionary board? Because guess what you do? You, you conduct needs assessment to see what the needs are of the citizenry. And I applaud you all for that. I applaud you all for that. But I want to say to each of you that body cameras are an imperative. They're an absolute imperative. I was horrified, absolutely horrified, hearing of the incident 
with the Marine. And I'm sure each of you have heard and read that horrifying story about, uh, about that Marine having killed four people. I was additionally trepidized and horrified to hear that in little old Lakeland, we have a, a particular citizen that actually descended upon Washington on January the 6th and participated in the carnage that occurred there. And apparently it was several, several that hailed from Lakeland. So you mean to tell me we don't need body cameras? Because that's the potential to have those kinds of factions of people certainly would say to me that there's potential for some unrest to occur in Lakeland. So we need to, uh, the, the, our officers uh, protect and serve and protect the citizenry, but they also need protection too. And so there is a desperate need for, for body cameras. And I want to say to each of you, I'm, I've been bewildered. I've literally been scratching my head as I've sit and listened to the discourse and the disc, uh, dialogue with you all. For the last year or two, I have collected an aggregate list of grant monies available. Where this comes from commissioners that they have to absorb all of the costs for, for body cameras, I'm not quite sure. Hillsborough County was able to access approximately about four or $500,000 from the U.S. Department of Justice. Orlando was also able to access dollars. So you all don't have to absorb all of the costs for body cameras. The monies are out there. And I understand you have a grant writer, so that person should certainly be exploring what opportun grant opportunities is out there. The, money, the dollars are out there. So there's a misperception on the part of commissioners that they have to absorb all of the costs for body camera. There are dollars out there. I've been sharing this information for the last four or five years. When I've met with some of Tony Delgado, I've met with our current commissioner and the chief, and I've shared an aggregate list of opportunities, grant opportunities that are available to help to defray the cost of body camera. So I urge you all, I urge you all to charge your, your grant writer with looking at these opportunities. Confer with your, your neighboring uh, um, law enforcement officers and see how they were able to get the dollars. The dollars are there. The U.S. Department of Justice has money for body cameras. Please, please, I, I implore you all, look for those dollars so that you don't have to, uh, to, uh, to use all of the money that you have available. I know you want contingency dollars for things that might occur. So please, I, I implore you to look for dollars other than your budget uh, Thank you. dollars. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Deborah Thompson. I would just like to say, I'm not gonna repeat anything else. Everything has been said. But with being an ex-police officer, a female, now 75 years old, I think that everything that has been said today means that you love me and I love you. Let's do what's right. Let's get the body cams, please. <laughs> Hello, my name is Roberto Lider. I've lived in Lakeland for 10 years. And before I've lived here, and now I'm a US citizen, I've lived in developing nations, I've lived in South America, in Europe, and I've never paid as little in property taxes as I do here. I will gladly pay more to have body cameras to keep our parks, because I love this city, I love my parks, I love, but I can tell you that uh, it's, my neighbors, we pay more on Netflix than we pay sometimes on property taxes and services. Come on. And also, I, while I love LPD, while I was driving on Taylor County, on Perry, I was stopped on my car by the sheriff, and they accused me of stealing my own car, and they were going to arrest me for stealing my own car with my title just because, you know, I'm a foreigner with an accident and all that. If they had had body cameras, I mean, it would have been much easier for when I contacted my attorney to have all of these. But uh, what I would like to say is, uh, honestly, taxes are 
very affordable in this town, at least for me and for most of my neighbors too. And what we want is to keep our services as body cameras are a must today because they protect us and they protect the police officers because if they're doing their duty, then no one can be a hearsay than that they did something, in, you know, like I've had police do investigations in my neighborhood. I live in Dixieland and, they're, and they've been all right. And, but as I said, you, it protects them, it protects us. So I think it's what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. 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 Y'all know the Bucks game, so okay, let's get this going. <laughs> okay. Let's get this show on the road. Man agrees with you right here. <laughs> my, my name is Larry Mitchell, and um, you know, I, um, I'm a research type of guy. You know, I like to give you facts. So in my research, you know, I, I look at the, the benefits and the cost factor and what the experts say, you know? And experts, even though it may be in Washington State, it may be the federal government, it's still the experts and the numbers are empirical numbers, you know? And you could use that anywhere in, 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 in Lakeland, Polk County. Mr. Musak, I, I, we had a meeting, but we missed it. I was at my office in Moore, you came up to see me. I didn't really get to know you. I would have had a conversation with you and more of an intimate conversation, since you would be perhaps new on the board is that, and you, Mr. Reed, and others, this is bigger than, than the financial thing you, 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 you're talking about. This, this goes back decades. This goes back centuries. This is in the DNA of most of us here, black and brown people. If my suggestion to anyone of, of your liking would be try to get out of your skin sometime. Come, come, you know, get out of that fashion that you've been in. Just walk in my shoes for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Talk to me. Talk to people, and you see, you perhaps will see a different vision, a different outlook on things, what we're talking about, what we're feeling, what we're seeing, what, how disappointed we are, how hurt we are to see things occur over and over again and doesn't seem like justice is there. And that brings me to, to, the, to the point that uh, I don't know how you can put a number on some of the things that I'm going to suggest here. You know, when you talk about a million dollars, I think the, the, my numbers show that that's about a trillion dollars in settlements are, are given every year because of, uh, you know, civil lawsuits. You know, how do you, how do you um, off, offset that when you come to just a million dollars? It hasn't happened here yet, but it could happen here. The worst of the worst. And so let me just give you some, if I may, Extend me two minutes, please. 45 seconds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 45 <laughs> seconds. Okay, let me just, just show you a few things that, I, that you need to consider, the pros of why this should be versus the con. The only con things that my research show that uh, it, it infringed upon your personal, your personal privacy and maybe the other was cost. Okay, when I put the scale up, you know, the preponderance of evidence, brother, is way over in favor of, of having it. And such things as this, some of we've already mentioned. Fiscally responsible, like I said, over a trillion dollars in settlements. It improves the behavior. Put a price on that. You got a good behavior as a police. I got a good behavior in the, in the community. Hey, a lot of things ain't gonna happen that you ain't gonna really see, you know, because we respect one another. Good behavior, right? It tells the story. You have an independent third party. It's a citizen against the police, but well, here's the camera. Somewhere in there is the truth. That's another thing. Can't put a price on that either. One more. One more. One more. False complaints. We see a lot of that, right? False complaints. I think it reduces false complaints and enhances public trust. That's my fifth one. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello, sir. He's a preacher, too. <laughs> and to the commissioner, I'm delighted to be here today, and I want to commend the commissioner for the fine work that you're doing. One of the things I'm concerned about, 
not only the public, but also our wonderful police department. Uh, they have a stake in this. In fact, about it, it protects the police as well as those who are being arrested. So the camera would certainly uh, be an additional witness to what take place. And I think it would be a great thing on the part of our great city, Lakeland, Florida, an all-American city. I don't think we ought to be behind everybody else. We ought to be on the front line. I think I forgot to give my name. Yes, you did. Okay, yeah. let me give it. Yeah. I'm Pastor Alex Harper, First Baptist Institution Church of Lakeland. So I want to urge you, I want to applaud you, and that you would vote yes for the body camera because we have lives at stake. Lives could easily be ruined by misunderstanding and false information. So I think we all want to have correct information that would enhance our police department when they make their report as well as the community. Thank you very kindly. May God bless all of you. Thank you, Reverend. Any other statements by the public? President of the Party of Dick Neighborhood Association. I'm going to be quick because everything has been said, and thanks for the, the, uh, the book that you read over there, which you were saying was perfect, dead on time. Uh, I have diffused three situations that uh, has come up. <clears throat> the incident at Salem a few years ago, that came to the, one of our meetings, and they wanted to know what should we do. I'm not a violent person. I'm not, you know, I don't go out and cause problems. But I do not allow people to just walk through my house. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> There's some situation where you have to defend yourself or defend your neighborhood. I'll give suggestions that will stop crazy stuff, okay? And in saying that, body cameras would stop people like, <clears throat> not necessarily me, but would stop people that have those tendencies. They will come to the police department and ask to see the body cameras or some kind of uh, viewing as to what actually happened. Another thing came up when the gentleman, I don't know if you remember, police chief, the gentleman was uh, asleep up under the Interstate 4 about a year ago. The police came to, and asked him to move. He refused to move. They kicked him and kicked him and woke him up but they still kicked him. The body camera showed that he kicked him. The body camera showed that they put the, the feet on his neck, but then the body cameras went off, okay? The body cameras could have stayed on and we would have known exactly what happened from that point on. So, and then that came to one hour meetings. And here again, I was asked, we were asked in the Pauly Dix meeting, what should we do? Here again, I have to defuse some of these things. So because a lot of stuff doesn't come up to full fruition, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It does happen. The third thing was this, this young lady was speaking concerning her situation where the police officers went up to her house, scared her, scared her child, as well as the grandchild. And then just all, all of a sudden just left. That has come up. We got the diffuse that. Things do come up almost daily, or well not daily, quite frequently in the neighborhood that has to be diffused. If we had the body cameras, it'll be easy for the neighborhood association leaders who you guys gave us, commissioned us to be the liaisons between the neighborhood and the city. You gave us, the, you commissioned us to do that. Give us a little bit more leeway by having the body cameras then we wouldn't have to have such a hard job to defuse certain situations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. <laughs> Are there any other comments from the public at all? Okay, hearing none, uh, this is, what, what I'm, I'm turning around to decide, what to, do I do now, sir? <laughs> uh, any more discussion with the commission? If not, then a vote on the, on the motion. All right, is there any other commission discussion? 
or comments? Is this roll call? Yes. Uh, we, uh, are, are we going to vote for all at one or are we going to do separate? It'll be a separate vote. The first vote will be on the millage, tentative millage rate ordinance, and then I'll read into the record the uh, actual budget appropriation ordinance, and then you'll have to vote on that separately. Millage first, and okay. Isn't there logic in it being just the reverse of that? The statute requires that you do it the millage rate first. Right. So, uh, so on the millage rate, then is what we're voting on only in this. So the the question is, do are we approving and the which is the motion of 5.4323 simple majority required threshold millage rate. Um, Commissioner Walker. Aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Aye, so unanimously approved. Then the second ordinance that you need to tentatively approve tonight is proposed ordinance number 21-039, an ordinance relating to appropriations, providing for the appropriation of money for the city of Lakeland, Florida, for various purposes for the fiscal year commencing October 1st, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2022 provided an effective date. So this would be the budget, including the- That's correct. The cameras. Who's the cameras. Okay. Um, do we need a motion on that? Yes. Yes, then a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Walker and Commissioner Madden, uh, second. Discussion by commissioners? Commissioner Mc, uh, McCarley. I have questions that, have, that don't have anything to do with body cameras. Is that okay? <laughs> on the budget. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Since it's the budget <laughs> hearing, <laughs> I mean, um, so I went through the budget pretty thoroughly, and I just had a couple questions, and probably Mike, they're probably for you. Um, one is on Cleveland Heights, the golf course, and it reflects in the general fund that they broke even the last three years, and going into the future is the way I kind of crunch those numbers. I'm a little confused about that. <clears throat> There's a transfer from the general, I mean, from the public improvement fund to the to the general fund uh, of 4.9 million dollars a year. 800,000 of that was earmarked to assist with the golf course. Um, so last year, they, they even with a COVID year, I think they used most all of that, but the year prior they did not. Right, That's and that just stayed in the general fund. Right We're trending this year. Uh, well, jinx us, but we're trending this year that not all of that 800000 that was transferred to the general fund will be used to subsidize it, so that'll just stay in the general fund. So what's that subsidy look like for that this year, for 22, for the, to approve in this budget? We budgeted 800000 That's part of the, there's a transfer in of $4.9 million from the public improvement fund to the general fund, and it's just funding a number of things 800,000 of that is, is what we had earmarked for the golf course. But again, we're, we're hopeful it's going to break even and, and actually not require anywhere near that. And then on um, RP funding, and I appreciate Commissioner McLeod bringing that, earlier, bringing that up earlier. Um, on this, I looked at the intergovernmental intergover revenues, but then also the transfers in, it's the same thing as the golf course, that it's transferring in from elsewhere from the general fund to subsidize it yes for rp funding yeah the, the rp funding gets the revenues from two sources one is the general fund and one is the public improvement fund the general fund is contributing the lowest we've contributed i look back just 10 years to 2012 and this will be the lowest it's ever contributed at 1.8 million dollars um at, at, at one point, it was a high of $3.8 million and 20. That was related to COVID. Right. Okay. Um, in, in the Public Improvement Fund, uh, they're contributing $1.5 million in 22 as well. Okay. That's a total of $3.3 million in subsidy. Okay. What makes up the 1.5 is 500000 for operating, 400000 for capital, and 654000 for debt service. So that was my next question. On what do we owe Polk County? What's our debt service to them on that building? We, we don't owe them anything. They're paying a portion and we're paying a portion. So and we're not so, paying them back. Mm -hmm. So they own part of the building. Mm -hmm. Well, they're paying the debt service on that building. They don't own anything. We, the but they've committed the to pay a portion of that expansion. Okay. Red tax. Yeah. Right. So, um, 
but what that does is that on an, on an absolute basis to 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 the question earlier about what is the what is the the subsidy going to be for fiscal year 22 it's about 3.3 million dollars for 22 in 21 again covid year that was 4.89 million and it was 5.4 million in 20 the 3.3 million will be the lowest that we've can, we've had to subsidize since going into the 2014 budget okay Yep. Two reasons. Two reasons for that. Part of it is it's now a government governmental fund. Okay, so eight hundred and eighty-four thousand dollars of the, what the general fund was contributing to that went away, and now they're picked up by the other enterprise funds that we've talked about. So it didn't go okay? away. We're just pulling it from other places. It went away from the general fund. We were just right. talking about the general fund, right? Oh, it's still absolutely. I mean, we're got, still paying it. Absolutely, that part didn't go away. For the public, it's still being paid. It the didn't magically off. like float off. But there's another piece that did magically go away, and that's six hundred fifty thousand dollars that the RP funding center cut from their budget for this year, right. and that is a cut. That is, that's just reduced costs, reduced expenses. Uh, Personnel costs, those types of things. So but we're still at a 3.3 million subsidy. Yeah, three point. Yes, ma'am. Right now we're still point three. Can I say something? No, sir. I come down here for a meeting. Uh, I mean, let's vote on this thing. We're waiting on. Here, sit down, and I'll tell you. But but what we're just. Y'all come up with all kind of excuses. <laughs> this, this people lie to be playing with. Go ahead and vote. And get it over with. Well, there are other questions with respect to the budget. Oh, okay. Vote. Any other questions, ma'am? I just had it. That helps me a lot. Um, there were a couple little questions, but I'll follow up with you after. Please, yeah, please. Commissioner McLeod. Thank you, Mary. This is a smaller item, but um, Bob Donahue, the uh, extra positions at Lake Crago, and you may have talked about that at our budget workshop, but can you just elaborate on that? I mean, it seems like we're, we're expanding that programming, you know, the need for two full-time and one part-time staff member. Bob Donahue, Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, currently, the Lake Crago building was open. That staff was actually approved in the previous budget year, but because of COVID and cutbacks, we couldn't we afford didn't. them. Okay. Uh, what we've been doing is using other employees from other areas to be able to fill in for those buildings, uh, rentals, classes, that type of thing. Some of the employees that we have on staff are currently working split shifts, four hours in the morning, four hours in the evening. Um, there's no well, no other department in the city that does that. Uh, we've been trying to fill in the best we can. And then also we've had to have reduced hours. We have a kayak canoe vendor out there. There's some hours of the day that we don't have any staff there in the building. Uh, and we've had to reduce programs because of it. Uh, so we haven't been able to fully program the building uh, and also operate to its fullest capacity uh, because of the staffing shortage. Okay. So, and like I say, we're doing the best we can. It's a chicken and egg. Yeah, yeah. And hoping that programming continues to grow as you add those those positions. I just yes, wanted sir. some further clarification on that. It's again, it's not a huge number, but um, you know, it, it is additional positions. And yes, sir. It's yeah. whatever. It's like I say, it's, it is producing, and the the building was to be programmed for and be rented out and stuff like that. And because of those things, we're able to to do what we were want to do. Yes, sir. I think Commissioner Matt has a question too. Thank you. Well, it's not for you, Bob. But, <laughs> I mean, I love you, Bob. You can stay right there if you'd like. But I did want to say to my colleague, Commissioner McCarley, that I'd like to think that because we've been honing in on RP Funding Center for the last couple of years, that's why we've gone from 5.4 million to 4.89 million to 3.3. And even though that 3.8, 3.3 is really 4.1, it is still a descent three years in a row, and hopefully that will continue um, because that's been a huge priority too. Like, you know, to be able to think that we are able to reduce our millage rate tonight and have our subsidy cut um, is because we've been asking the tough questions and making sure that not just adding things like body cameras tonight, but we've also at the same time been asking for cuts and we've seen them. And in COVID, mm -hmm. during COVID. I mean, I was at those meetings too. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, <laughs> your your advocacy is what is made the difference. I mean, I don't want you to not.
think that it hasn't made a difference. So I just think it's important that we talk about, we're talking about $1.1 million for body cameras, and that is a lot of money in someone's personal budget. But then when we are tasked with not only you know, responding to our citizenry and hearing what they're saying and, and mm -hmm. being very cognizant of the needs of the community at large, we're also duly responsible to manage a budget that's this year over $700 million. I mean, that's a lot of money for mm -hmm. any community, much less a community the size of Lakeland. And I think the staff and the, the LPD and the fire department, every, everyone does their job really, really well here. And they are all very cognizant of their budgets and good stewards. But the onus is on us as representatives of taxpayers to make sure that we continue to ask the hard questions and it doesn't just fall through the cracks because mm -hmm. we're having a discussion that is you know, political at the moment on something very specific as body cameras, I don't want anyone to lose sight that, especially the people here, that this book is what we take home and look at and that our staff pulls together all the information for us and does a really good job. But it's not, a, we're not a single entity commission. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you saying that. I also just want the public to know and the people who are watching it um, and paying attention to this is that we take this extraordinarily seriously. Like we all, Everyone that sits on this dais, all of the staff members that participate in this process, as well as our community at large, is we're talking about one issue, but we have 735 million issues. And so this is very important, and the public outpouring and commentary is vitally important to us making decisions. But I feel like it is still on me as someone who wants to educate the public on mm -hmm. how this works, that we're not just going to come in and have an hour and a half meeting to talk about a single entity. It's imperative that we support our fire department, our law enforcement, our public works, um, our lakes, our stormwater, our traffic, our roads, and all the infrastructure, LE, Lakeland Electric, which by the way, if we didn't have Lakeland Electric, we wouldn't even be able to fund this budget. <laughs> so we need to be very grateful for them. Um, but I just think it's really important for the public to understand mm -hmm. that, and I appreciate you bringing it up that we are stepping down, but we talk about these numbers like they're nothing. We're talking about $1.1 million, like, oh, let me just, I'll write a personal check for it and that we have a deficit at RP funding that's $3.3 million. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's more police and more body cameras and more everything else. So I'm just yeah. trying to equate that for the public, that we take this very seriously um, and that we have a lot to think about and we appreciate your support and understanding that because it's not just a one issue commission. And um, I just felt, com I felt compelled that if we're gonna have a budget hearing that I'd like to talk about the budget beyond one issue, because as you mentioned very often, this is the only time the commission can speak to one another. We're not allowed, Mrs. Madden and I aren't allowed to have off topic conversations on the telephone and me say, hey, Stephanie, how are you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or Philip, what do you think about this? Under Sunshine, this is the only time we can speak. And so it's really important for us to hear one another and hear what our thoughts are beyond a single entity issue, because I don't get to talk to my peers mm -hmm. and work in a collaborative collaborative environment like a lot of other people do. So I just sort of wanted to bring that up and I appreciate Mr. Brosart's patience with me and sharing that, but when I was going through the budget the last few days, I just had some questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner McCarley. I appreciate it. And it is complicated. Um, Commissioner Music. Yeah, and I have a comment that's not budget related, so thank you for, for, for taking that. I, I just, I mean, as I sit here and I listen to everybody come up and and express and um you know give their give their thoughts and give their opinion i, I just want to say thank you um i would like to echo however that just like this is one topic of many um it may be something that 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 you and i disagree on but as believers as humans as citizens of lakeland we also need to know that we can be together and disagree on a few things. Um, so I just, you know, my, my heart's been pounding since I've been sitting here listening to you because I've, I've thought and thought and thought about this and I've researched and researched and researched and I've called everybody that, would, that, that I could get on the phone that has experience with this and, and that's how I, I have come to the, the conclusion that I'm in. But, but I just want to say thank you because as difficult as it is to get up here and make a decision that, that may not be popular, I think it's also difficult to be in situations where you feel that, that you're not being heard or you feel that, that the officers are, are not doing the best they can for you. I think that that's not the case because what I heard from all of you was great comments about the police and then you followed it up with a but. 
but we still need the body cameras. And, and, and I'm going to stop before the but because our, our, our police and our fire and our first responders are doing excellent here. And, and, and you all admit that. Um, but I, I just want to say thank you. Um, it, it is a long day. It's a two hour meeting at the end of a long day of meetings. Um, but I appreciate you guys taking the time and the effort to come and share. And um, I, my hope as a citizen here is that, that we go out, the, the one gentleman that left that we were trying to get a meeting together. I mean, you know, we need to, we need to look beyond one. And it looks like there's, there's probably still the votes for it. But um, that's just my hope is that we can continue to look across at each other and, and, and have a good relationship and work towards the next issue. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Walker. And my comment is we, if we're back on the budget. <laughs> Because I think it's important, as you mentioned, Commissioner uh, McCauley, that many people don't, do not know and do not understand how many times we're funding other sources just as much more money as we're asking about this particular uh, component tonight. RP funding being, being being the elephant in the room. And I know for the last probably three years or better, you know, we've been, I guess, uh, uh, it's been some subject about making that particular particular uh, component, just as we've done with the golf course some, some years back, Cleveland Heights, to do the same thing for um, as we would do with RP funding, and have it a separate, have, have it tied into, of course, uh, our parks and rec. You know, because of the kind of source, the kind of events, the kind of situations that it, activities that go on there, can be very, very much related to what you know, Parks and Rec with golf and Cleveland Heights, RP funding and its programs and its events. So I think that's a subject that we need to discuss in the future. I know we've, we kind of broached it kind of a subject some three, four years ago. We hadn't gone anywhere, but you know, uh, and if not, we could tend to, you have to fund the, the deficit of what it costs to run that particular center. And as you just mentioned, and both of you all just said it. It went from what six, five, six million down, down to about three million, and we're talking about 1.1 million. So, you know, we, those kind of things I think people don't understand, uh, may not understand because they don't hear all those particular elements when it comes to what we're doing and how we have from April of this year to now get to the point where we are now to to take on uh, the vote for a budget and the middle rates we want to set for the next fiscal, fiscal year. So I think that's all important, but as I conclude, um, Mr. City Manager, I wasn't writing fast enough to get all those particular items that you talked about for the different target areas. So if we can get a copy of those things that you mentioned, I would greatly appreciate it. It has nothing to do with my vote tonight, but I need to have that to make sure I can have what those particular areas talking areas you talked about, such as, for an example, infrastructure. We, we mentioned the Providence Road situation is coming about here very soon. Yes. You talked about some other things on that. I didn't write it down. I didn't have a chance to. So if you get that to us, especially for me, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. And, and let me just also say that, you know, the examples that I gave were not exhaustive. They yeah, I know. Some of the yeah. projects. And so, but we will get as much. But it helps when we talk to the public. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Commissioner Reed. Thank you, Mayor. I wish Larry had stayed around. He's, I really enjoy visiting with Larry. He's, uh, I, I see him out frequently at the most weird places, it seems like. And I've served on the board with Lorenzo Robinson. Uh, I respect him immensely. I hope you run for city commissioner sometime, personally. Uh, my stance really hasn't changed because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm always a no vote. Seems like I'm always the guy that I'm squeezing that dime to get a penny out of it somehow. Uh, we've made a lot of impassioned speeches tonight. I, I, I agree with every one of them, but I'm watching the dollar. And, and like Mike, uh, uh, I hope we can be friends when it's over. We, we, we disagree a lot of times on a lot of different issues. And if we haven't had a fist fight yet. We haven't thrown stuff at each other like some commissioners have seen on TV. And of course, we talk about a million dollars. I, I grew up in a little town, Frostproof. They can't find $50,000 to do stuff. But we're fortunate we've got $700 million to deal with. 
and, and it's a unique situation. Uh, it's, un it's fortunate. And of course, thank you, Sarah, for enlightening everybody about the situation that we're in from communicating with one another and looking at the, the big picture. Uh, and so there again, I, I will not support the issue there again. Uh, I will f do my best to get a good contract because I, it, I'm going, it looks like it's going to pass to me. Uh, but uh, being true to myself and to the people that I represent, I want to be negative about it. Any other comments by commissioners? Um, any other comments? unrelated to what we've already discussed by anyone in the audience. Yes. Please come up and state your name. Thank you. My name is Mary Rose Mazur, and um, I'm new to Lakeland. We just moved here in less than a year ago, and we're very excited about this community. And I just want to say to the commissioners, I really appreciate when you consider your constituents and consider all of us in um, because um, I looked at our property tax um, statement that came out and the our property taxes are going to be substantially higher than I anticipated when uh, we came here when I looked at what they were last year and what they're going to be this year is a very very large difference so thank you as you consider um, your the budget and anything that think about us that have to pay all those property taxes, which I'm, you do too. So I appreciate if you're understanding about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comment. All right, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner McLeod. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. Passes five to two. All right. So you know what your work is to get done, yes, sir, at this point, correct? I'm finalizing the budget. Yes, sir. And we have our um, second required uh, public hearing for the budget adoption scheduled for September the 23rd at 6 o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.